Robotic lightning bugs take flight. MIT News. I'm sorry, that doesn't look like a lightning bug, but okay. Let's see here. Fireflies that light up dusky backyards on warm summer evenings use their luminescence for communication to attract a mate, ward off predators, or lure prey. These glimmering bugs also sparked the inspiration of scientists at MIT. Taking a cue from nature, they built electroluminescent soft artificial muscles for flying, insect-scale robots. The tiny artificial muscles that control the robot's wings emit colored light during flight. This electroluminescence could enable the robots to communicate with each other. If sent on a search and rescue mission into a collapsed building, for instance, a robot that finds survivors could use lights to signal others and call for help. Oh, okay, so that's the purpose of these things. To be used as uh, fodder for jobs that people won't do. The ability to emit light also brings these microscale robots, which weigh barely more than a paper clip, one step closer to flying on their own outside the lab. These robots are so lightweight that they can't carry sensors, so researchers must track them using bulky infrared cameras that don't work well outdoors. Now, they've shown that they can track the robots precisely using the light they emit and just three smartphone cameras. I like how they throw in, uh, they can't track them without bulky, right? Bulky, you know, to, to put in there that it's a, a hazard to track these things. Okay. I mean, I bet you if they're connected to Wi-Fi, they can track them. If you think of large-scale robots, they can communicate using a lot of different tools, Bluetooth, wireless, all those sorts of things. But for a tiny, power-constrained robot, we are forced to think about new modes of communication. This is a major step toward flying these robots in outdoor environments where we don't have a well-tuned state-of-the-art motion tracking system, says Kevin Chen, who is the D. Reed Whedon Jr. Assistant Professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, EECS. The head of the Soft and Micro Robotics Laboratory in the Research Laboratory of Electronics, RLE, and the senior author of the paper. All this says to me that they're designing a high-tech spy equipment. They can literally act as the fly on the wall in the proverbial saying, right? And you wouldn't even know it. Let's see. He and his collaborators accomplished this by embedding minuscule electroluminescent particles into the artificial muscles. The process adds just 2.5% more weight without impacting the flight performance of the robot. Joining Chen on the paper are EECS graduate students Suhan Kim, the lead author, and Yi Suan Xiao, Yu Fan Chen SM, 14, PhD, 17 and Jia Mao, an associate professor at Ningxia University. The research was published this month in IEEE Robotics and Automation Letters. Hmm. So, I don't think we're going to get much more out of that. I just thought it was interesting. I had seen that uh, posted on uh, online, and I thought it was interesting that they were working on that. Because I believe they built Mosquito. Yeah, I think, yeah. Let's see here. S8 mosquito killer robot carried by a mobile robot, a mosquito trap is capable of protecting a large area automatically. To this end, 
The mosquito killer robot patrols the territory along its predetermined route, split into segments of 21 to 33 yards long, stopping after each segment for several hours to attract the adjacent insects. The robot's running time largely depends on the capacity of the tank that stores compressed gas used to produce carbon dioxide, CO2, which attracts flying insects. CO2 is produced from propane, a readily available gas, commonly used for fueling barbecue grills. Compressed propane gas undergoes a catalytic reaction yielding carbon dioxide and water vapor. A fully charged gas tank is usually enough for a week of continuous operation. While fully charged batteries powering the robot trap's propulsion system will last long enough to protect an area of up to 50 acres. Yeah, so I always thought, hey, they're doing that with these mosquitoes. What's the chance that they don't send out some that are infected that uh, fly and infect people without them knowing you get stuck? Stung by one of these things, you think it was just a mosquito that uh, bit you, and uh, here you got the newest virus introduced into your bloodstream robotically. It's not gonna do it, is it? Nope. Let's see. Unlike mosquito misting systems that use a special chemical spray, the propane mosquito trap is absolutely innoxious and does not require any additional safety measures. The propane mosquito trap is sensitive to wind and lighting conditions. It is well known that sandflies tend to prefer shaded areas, therefore, the mobile trap should be optimally located in open spaces at night and in shaded areas during the daytime. Additionally, the attractant gas might be wafted away by the wind. Which is why the robot is equipped with a wind sensor that determines the robot's location based on sensor data to ensure the most effective coverage of areas with potential concentrations of insects. The propane mosquito trap robot is operated via a tablet. Remote wireless control is also possible. This is probably the killer robot they're talking about and not the actual these suckers. <laughs>